Hi everyone, my name is Matt Bronick. I'm a production sound mixer based in Los Angeles. And this week I'm joining Sound Devices at their booth at NAB 2019, showcasing their new flagship Scorpio production audio recorder. This goes way far beyond what we currently had with the 6 series. Because the Scorpio is so rich, if we were to go through every single uh, bullet point, uh, this could be easily be an hour long video. So um, let's just uh, get right to it and at least take a quick overview of each side um, on the Scorpio. So let's start with the inputs. Uh, right off the bat, you can see that there are 16 uh, mic and line preamped inputs with phantom power. So that on its own is already a pretty big jump for a recorder of this size. But speaking of size, you know, we had to be a little bit creative of, of, of what sort of connectors we offer. We have six full-size XLR connections there in, for inputs. We have two TA3 mini XLR inputs and channels 9 through 16 are uh, TA5 uh, mini uh, stereo mini XLR connections which through adapter Y split cables can be, become um, um, individually controlled uh, uh, mono channels. Uh, we have a dedicated 5-pin headset connector and also uh, an, aux an auxiliary output uh, which is auxiliary out outputs 9 and 10 which follow the headphone program and, uh, and a calm return in case you were speaking uh, you, your communication with a boom operator or, or so on. Front panel. The first 12 channels are easily are fully controllable through the front panel controls and that is both pre-fader trim and post-fader. Um, in order to channel to access channels 13 and above that's where you will need to start accessing the virtual fader menus uh, like so uh, which in this case uh, uh, would, uh, would either be the analog inputs or um, or Dante inputs. So this recorder, not only do you have analog inputs and two AES inputs for, for digital sources, but we also have 32 by 32 uh, Dante connection as well. So if you're familiar with Dante, which is an audio over IP protocol, um, essentially what it is is you're able to get uh, uh, lots of channels of audio through a single, single Ethernet cable and that cable is connected to a network switch and from there it's connected to a device or to a rack mounted hardware um, uh, that has, um, you know, th that's where your inputs would be. So essentially you're remoting out those inputs and I see that being useful for, for a mul multiple uses depending on how advanced your, your workflow is but, 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 um, but more importantly um, you know, I could see that being used for situations like uh, being a, a front of house. Let's say uh, you, you were tasked to film or, or to at least rec multi-track record a, uh, a musical performance at a venue and you, d you didn't want to use a giant snake cable uh, and also bother the, the house sound guy. Um, in this case, all you would need to run is a, uh, a cat cable and an IP address assignment, and uh, you'll be able to, to record, uh, you know, I think up to 32 channels of Dante uh, full fidelity audio. So, taking a look at, at, our, at our right side, which is the, the, out, the output connector panel, we've got your, your main left and right outputs, which are also your AES 1 through 4 uh, digital outputs. We have our two 10-pin Hiroshi connections, which are your can be your LR, direct outs, even AES channels five through eight, all depending on how your your 10-pin snake cables are configured. And we have uh, we have six TA3 connections, a mini XLR connections for your for uh, six uh, customizable output uh, outputs and uh, unbalanced uh, stereo uh, outputs as well. Uh, which are also customizable w within the menus. Um, of course, we have your, your five pin Limo connection for an, an improved uh, timecode controller, uh, uh, timecode clock uh, generator and controller, uh, which has uh, uh, support for LTC, word clock, and GPIO uh, storage. The Scorpio has a built in 256 gigabyte solid state drive and also supports two removable SD cards as well. And, all, and you're able to record to all sources, all, all media sources simultaneously. 
or you're able to choose uh, what sort of programs you want to send to each card. Let's say I wanted to record my entire multi-track files onto the solid state drive, but only deliver my just my mix tracks or maybe select ISO tracks to uh, you know you know to DIT at the end of the day. Um, so. Uh, so yeah, uh, very flexible uh, media routing options as well. As far as uh, recording formats, this Scor the Scorpio, uh, I believe, supports um, the full 36 tracks at, at uh, 96 kilohertz sampling rate by 24-bit depth, or 18, up to 18 tracks of 192 kilohertz sampling rate by 24-bit depth. No matter what, that's a whole lot of data throughput, but no matter what you throw at this Scorpio, um, you, you can be sure that you're getting solid operation. So talking power, you can actually see, see one from here. Okay. So the Scorpio ha has four different powering options. All are independently isolated from each other for redundancy purposes. You have two uh, external DC power connections, which are based on a TA4 connector. And, uh, and these act as redundancies for each other in the rare event that, that if one DC input were to fail, you always have one DC input that you can count on. Additionally, you have two, you have two L series battery mounts, uh, which uh, you know the, the Sony uh, NPL batteries, uh, uh, which are which will basically be used as your backup battery sources in case you lose external DC power. Um, when those batteries are installed, they are being charged by the external DC as well. So no matter what your setup is, no matter what environment you're you're shooting in, you can always count on a dependable, safe source of power. Just looking at the front panel, um, you can see that there's a odd, there's a all 32 channels uh, running right now. So so this Scorpio is connected to a 970 recorder below me, which is in playback mode. This will give you a nice little light show of, of dancing meters. That's a pretty dense screen, but of course, you know, changing the meter views is very simple uh, through a shortcut. Uh, and from there, you know, your, the amount of information on your screen can be as basic or as dense as you need it to be. It, it really all depends on your workflow. And so, so, so let's talk workflow. Um, unlike the, the six series recorders that do have, a, a, you know, a, a, still have a wide variety of routing options, the Scorpio has what we call sort of a, a, a matrix routing uh, sort of scheme. So um, in, in, in easy terms, input one, the XLR input one, doesn't necessarily need to live on channel one. And you, you can either you can either assign channels to to individual direct outs, or you can create custom bus programs, which can be routed into any combination of of of, of the analog or digital outputs. So, so the best way you can do that is by you, you can go you can go to the bus if you go to the bus menu, and uh, you can you can create up to ten bus mixes. Let's just go to bus one. So this is an example of one of our bus menus here. And from here, you can assign any combination of ISO tracks, either pre or post fade. Here's a view of uh, Channel 1's pre-fader menu. Again, very familiar experience to those who have already used a six series recorders, but with, uh, with a couple additional new options. Um, because of the expanded, uh, more advanced DSP processing, we can do certain things like uh, um, you know, maybe an expanded range of high-pass filtering. You can you can uh, sweep this from 40 hilo, kil, from 40 hertz all the way to 320 hertz, compared to I believe what was uh, 240 on on, uh, on the six series recorders. Uh, you can uh, you can set uh, you can set both the channel and output delays up to 50 milliseconds, which is useful if you need to sync up your audio to um, Video Village. Uh, you've got. We have expanded limiter support, which I, I can get. In, I can. We can dive into that in just a moment. And uh, you can set uh, pre or post fader ISOs. We even have uh, EQ on every channel, which is pretty neat. And um, in order to access that, um, you know, you, you you go to your channel select menu. You you go to the to the EQ sub menu, and at at you have a low, mid, and high frequency selection, and from there you can choose the, you can choose the uh, the, the shelving type, uh, you can choose the, uh, the the reference frequency, the gain, and the Q width. 
and, and, and that can either be pre or post, post fade. Um, myself, I would recommend this to be post fade just so at all times you have a uh, unaltered ISO track that you can depend on and reference on in post production. Um, so we have our, our, our phase selection here, which is useful if you have, um, if you're running through un unknown sources. And, um, and by flipping this toggle switch here, uh, this takes us to the bus sends menu. Now, in, so th from here, you can select uh, which buses you would like the, uh, this channel to be routed to, um, either as a pre or post fade, or even, uh, even just uh, have it programmed as, a, as an unaltered bus send. Now, what, what is a bus send? Basically, what that means is um, sending a channel to a bus program that, that stays at a constant gain regardless of what front, front panel activity um, I, the user manipulates. Um, this is useful in a situation to where you just need a constant output feed um, uh, to Video Village or to a director or, or maybe to someone who's just uncomfortable hearing silence on their IFBs, maybe, maybe a boom operator who needs to be able to hear their boom at all times. Um, that can be very useful too um, if you want to create custom bus programs. Once your bus program is, is created, you can then go, go to your outputs, output programs, and uh, we can go to our main left, right bus and auxiliary outputs. And let's say I just need to create uh, an auxiliary mix that comes out of the, the, the auxiliary, um, the output. So let's go to X1. So from here, you can, you can, you can select uh, any combination of, of, uh, um, of, of pre or post fader ISOs. You can select, uh, uh, you, you can select your bus mix, mix programs. You can route uh, your, your, your slate com sends, uh, sends and, and returns through the outputs as well. And, or you can even just uh, route, route a return uh, back into an auxiliary output. So very versatile. And of course, you've got your, you, you can actually, you can delay the output. Um, you, you can add a delay at the output stage as well. Uh, you, can, uh, uh, you can turn down the gain and even set the, uh, the connection type, whether that's line level, mic level, or like a minus 10 dB level for, uh, for non-professional line, line input devices. So that's a quick overview of the sort of the bus and output work, uh, routing workflow. Uh, that's capable with the Scorpio. Let me show you one other feature that I'm very excited about as a sound mixer. We're all familiar with, with pre-roll, especially for those of you who have used the 6 Series recorders, but have you heard of post-roll? Now, first of all, uh, uh, you now have five more seconds of buffer on, uh, on the Scorpio when, when, uh, for both the pre-roll and the post-roll. So that's a lot, that's a lot of buffer, that's a lot of uh, a buffer safety on both ends of your tape. So we all know what pre-roll is. Um, the Scorpio, in this case, would constantly be caching, in this case, up to 10 seconds of, of, of audio that will automatically uh, start the file when you start the, when you engage uh, the recorder into record mode. So, but what is post-roll? We've all been in that situation where we are recording a take and everything's going great, the actors are doing their thing, the scene ends, and the director feels like it's appropriate to, to cut. So the director says, and cut. Wait, 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 don't cut, don't cut, don't cut, don't cut. In that case, um, all you need to do is you now have up to 10 seconds to decide to continue the recording on the same file you were just recording without skipping a beat, without skipping a frame. And so this eliminates the headache of, of having to re-roll, start a new file, then go back and rename the files and um, create tension with the script supervisor, maybe with the, with the DIT or, or the VFX supervisor that, that's on set. So another very, very thoughtful feature that um, at least myself personally, I've been begging sound devices to, uh, uh, to happen. So I'm really, really glad that it's, it's now coming to fru uh, fruition here. By the way, all, all of these LEDs are f full RGB color and, and will change colors depending on, on you know, easy to understand logic, depending on what sort of operations are in play on the Scorpio. Of course, you know, with every input, you've got green, You'll have green, yellow, orange, red, depending on how hot your signal is. Red meaning clipping, of course. 
hopefully that doesn't happen. But even if it does, you will have uh, you will have limiters on, on every channel that, that um, you can you can actually fine tune within the menus. Um, of course, the red uh, red means record. That's pretty straightforward. If you were to stop the recording, um, a flashing sort of a yellowish orange means that you're this, you've now entered uh, the post roll uh, standby, and and it fully turns off if you want to fully stop the recording. Um, but um, in the future, um, similar to our series recorders, we'll, we will be adding both Automix algorithms, of course, the, the famous Dan Dugan algorithm, and, and also Soundavice's own Mix Assist functionality. That, that will be available as a future firm date, maybe not a, a, a day one, but definitely that's at the very top of our list. The reason why I bring that up is, let's say you activate Automix on a couple channels, we were maybe thinking that the ring LED in that case would, wouldn't be green, maybe it would be like a purple color. So those possibilities are endless too, and that would just depend on our user feedback and where we decide to take things in the future. The Scorpio is a very uh, robust, uh, very, very flexible recorder that we feel like both the end user, the sound mixer, and sound devices as a company can use as a platform to continue grow and continue and sort of uh, continue expanding our careers together. This is going to be the flagship for, for, for years to come. So hopefully this quick rundown gives you a, a, a good, uh, at least a starting idea of what the Scorpio is all about. But, you know, like most of us sound guys and girls, we really just need to get our hands on one and just test, test it out on the field. So a Scorpio uh, is, is planned to be available the second quarter of 2019. Uh, and uh, yeah, hopefully uh, you can find one at a dealer near you to really test out on the field and really uh, understand how to get the most out of this amazing flagship device. So for more information, please visit the Sound Devices website. You can also uh, follow us and, and chat with us on social media. Um, thanks for joining us today and uh, we look forward to seeing you at future events.